This is happening because of the electroosmotic effect. When you emerge a solid interface in a liquid medium, at the surface there is a layer called Stern layer, which comes from the surface charges on, the, on, your, on your solid. And in our case, because of the surface, the volume ratio is enormous. The surface change becomes quite important. And the, in this layer, you got the counter ions of the liquid medium outside coming inside to counter, uh, to, to screen this diffuse electron diffuse layer. And the movement of these counter ions applies a hydrodynamic pressure around the surfaces on this stern lane, which is around 10 nanometers thick. And these hydrodynamic pressures make our little guy swim around. I don't know if the film is clear enough. In this case, the electric field that applied was very, very weak, and the electrodes were quite far away. But you, can, you see that it, follow, it swims nicely following the, the gradient lines of your electric field. Uh, the model that's in the film, it's one of the first, it's 70 microns long. Oops. Okay. So we have looked on the swimming performances. We have produced different types with modifying the doping concentration uh, using, an, uh, using metals or not uh, and the electric materials. And we found out that we can reach speeds as high as 25 times the length of the nanorobot, which is quite impressive. But you will see that the electric field in this case is quite impressive also. So I don't know if. Uh, it's, it would be possible to put 200 volts inside a human body, <laughs> but I don't think it's the case now. Anyway, but the, in the, the equation on the electroosmotic that I've shown you before, we were expecting to be linearly correlational to the electrical field. And the results are that it's not. So what we suspect that in this region, we, don't, we are not in the uh, same Reynolds region than we are here. So, uh, Optimizing the geometry and the dielectric materials of these stuffs, we hope that instead of having a parabola hill, we'll have a straight line, so we'll have much more swimming performances. Again, well, I'll come to the difference between this using an electric field versus a magnetic field to drive these guys inside your body. The, when you use a magnetic field, like Christian does, Actually, that's the magnetic field itself that applies the propelling force on the robot. In our case, the electric fields, it's merely the power source, the power source that creates the surface charges on the robot. And that surface, surface charges creates the propelling force through the electroosmotic effect. Okay, so actually, in this case, the robot is really self-propelled and it's not pulled or pushed by a magnetic field. So what we can do is, that modifying the surfaces of the robots by using a, for, a gradient of doping, for example, use, using different doping gradients on the head or on the tail, or even implementing PN junctions or this kind of stuff using three, five compounds in the production process, we can make the tails, the flagella, act differently under the electroosmotic effect. So what we are looking at that it is not achieved yet like to experience, to experiment the different propulsion techniques, like trying to pump the flagella or rotate it or shark-like propulsion. And as the main expertise of my group is on micro manipulation and assembly, we expect them, we expect to assemble several flagellas to have like more bacteria-like structures with multiple flagellas with different, with different properties. So we can really have a better swimming performance. <coughs> and I will come back to my equation, and you'll see that in this equation, the speed of the robot depends on several parameters. This one is the electric field, and this one is the surface changes of the robots, and H, the hydrodynamic function, which depends on the geometry. So what does it mean that the electric field by itself, it's not the sole power source, <coughs> because you can use the electroosmotic effect makes that the flow of your counter ions follows the electric field, but you can use an additional source 
to increase the surface charges on the robot. So you can use a very, very weak electric field just to point in the direction that your robot wanna go, and you can use another effect to increase the surface charges, so the speed of the robot. And one of the possible application, one of the possibilities of charging this robot with that is an electric field, for example, in this case, an infrared laser. We have, <laughs> like I said, we have used indium gallium arsenide, which has a very well known infrared detector properties, so it produces a little bit of electricity when it's under infrared radiation. Uh, in this movie, we are shooting the robot with an infrared laser, and there is nothing else. And you see that it moves by itself, by just by local charging. So we hope to combine these effects, external uh, surface charging, and using an electric field just to control the trajectories, to have a, a, a real effective propulsion of these guys. And the last one, not least, uh, my team is also involved in another project in European Committee funded that, uh, that's on the design of DNA sequences for controlled microassembly. The idea is to assemble microcomponents by sticking uh, DNA sequences on their surfaces and put all your different components in a box, shake it a little bit, and open it and hoping that every component is in place, just by designing the sequences. So the good components will stick together and the others won't. So we want to apply this to this nanorobots. And this is the AFM images of the wafers that went, that's going to the production that we have selenized to stick DNAs, DNA sequences on it. But well, I don't have any firm results on that yet because it's a little bit too soon. But I hope that we'll succeed to correctly stick this kind of DNA, design DNA sequences on the surfaces so we can make our robots selectively interact whatever compound you want to interact with. And this is the first experiment that we are planning before the end of the year. I was hoping to have it done before the conference, but well, you know, it never works this way. So the idea is to experiment in the micro channels. So this is the micro channel that we have produced with electrodes integrated. And we want to use the temperature to, dis, uh, to assemble and disassemble DNA single strands. So on the left side, we'll have a cold Peltier which will keep the temperature inside the hybridization limits. And on the left side, we will increase the temperature so the DNA will denaturalize, so the, uh, the particles will separate. So we'll put small particles and robots on the left side with complementary strands, move the robots uh, on the other side, change the temperatures, and move the robot back, leaving the particles on this side. So I hope that will, it's built with the uh, first ever demonstration of nanoscale transport using mobile nanorobots. Uh, external monitoring, Christian has already told a little bit about this. I don't know much, so I will just show you this slide and say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we are planning for the next generation of, of our nanorobots. So using electric field as a power source or uh, a, a laser-induced surface chargers. <coughs> oh, there's another idea that I haven't talked about. This is that when using 3-5 compounds in the, in the production, we can have them also piezoelectricity inside these robots. So they will harvest mechanical energy around and transform <coughs> it to the electrical energy, charging themselves. So it will improve probably their propulsion. And so the there are different energy conversion mechanism points that I have told you about the different loca uh, locomotion techniques that we are planning to do. And of course, the optimization of this propulsion goes through the optimization on the choice of the good materials for the structure of the robots. And what are they good for? That's the question that I'm here to ask you for actually, because well, I'm a mechanical engineer. I've been interested in this. Uh, uh, nanorobots for health applications, but I'm actually here to hear from you what you want to use them for. 